Tom came home from work one day, and he said, Pat, he said, Vernon Wattenberger, who worked in his mm -hmm. group at GE, is having auditions at his house. I told him you'd be there. <laughs> I said, you did what? <laughs> he said, I told him you were coming. And I said, I can't act. I hadn't been in a play since high school, and high school drama then was nothing like high school drama now. Mm -hmm. And he said, you can do it. And I said, well, maybe I'll go and I won't, won't make too much of a fool of myself and I can at least let them know that we're interested and we'll work on props and you can build sets. Okay. So I went. I was terrified. But I got a role. Oh, fantastic. So anyway, long story short, long story short, <laughs> I'm going on and on. Um, I was in a show. At, um, in Lanesboro uh, under the auspices of Soji players mm -hmm. because the Waynesboro players had not formed yet and did that. That was Love Rides the Bales or oh, Will the Bale Train Run Tonight mm -hmm. and I played the heroine Prudence Hopewell and then I did a second play in early 63 which was The Happy Time and that got us a role in Will Success for Rock Hunter. Ah, excellent. So, so that's how you got started with, yes. with Oak Grove. All right. right. So that's the story. Yeah, that's a good one. And there were, there were just a great number of people always there on, on Saturday night with the music. Let me find something here. Some of the people we saw were uh, Robin and Linda Williams in their early days. Beautiful young Robin. Can you pick Robin, that up? Beautiful <laughs> young Linda and Robin. Oh, look at that out. Linda was on stage sometimes as an actress. And there they are again in the early days. And Hazel and Alice came along sometimes. They were folk musicians. Came with Mike Seeger, Charlie's son. And the summer of 1960. The Greenbrier boys oh, were wow. at the farm. They spent the farm with Margaret, and they were putting together their group and learning all their songs. Oh. So there's, there's one more couple I, I wanted to mention, and that was a young girl named Daphne and her boyfriend, Angus. Now, Daphne was a DuPont, member of that DuPont family. She was uh, very, very sweet and very smart, but a little shy. She usually found a corner, but her boyfriend was Angus. And Angus played the guitar and he had some songs and he joined in and made his contributions. But the really dramatic thing that Angus did was to drive into the drive of the Oak Grove at about sundown when we were down there putting on our costumes and makeups. He came in with Daphne to the farmhouse and they stayed with us and then they walked up the hill. People walked up the hill in those days. They'd go to the show and they'd come back to the party afterwards. Well, what was unusual about this was that Angus drove a long, low Rolls Royce limousine. <laughs> and it seemed so appropriate to see a long, low Rolls Royce limousine coming up the farm lane at the, at the oh, Oak Grove great. to Fletcher's Farmhouse for Saturday night music and theater. That's fantastic. Now, I do have a question for you, cause, and, and I know we talked earlier, and, and I asked Pat if she uh, had any personal favorite roles, and, She's done so many, it's just, it would be extremely hard to choose. But I did want to know, if you had your ultimate role to play on stage, what would that be? Boy, I don't know. In a way, I've already done that. And it was Eleanor in The Lion for Winter. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. Um, I remember that. That yeah. every night when we were through with rehearsal or with the shows, I blessed that playwright for putting those words in my mouth. It, th the dialogue in that play is, is just amazing. <clears throat> the things I kind of regret doing, um, I would have loved to be in a true Shakespeare out here, mm -hmm. and I never was. I did The Lady's Not for Burning, which is in verse, and that was a wonderful experience, um, but I've never been into Shakespeare out here. And the other thing I would have loved to do is, is a lead in one of the Tennessee William plays. Oh, yeah. Now, I've been in a show, but 
uh, I'm not going to lead. Well, I'm sure your career's not over yet, so... <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> I haven't, you know, the, the last thing I did when I was the Grand Dom was um, Les Liaison, mm -hmm. and that was nine years ago. Well, I, the one that I wanted yeah. to know was if you had to act with one of the animals out here in the grove, which <laughs> animal would that be? Oh, God, never get on stage with an animal. You'll be off stage immediately. So. <laughs> no, no, not for me. No animals. <laughs> Having acted with Stan Stark, <laughs> you, do, you do not need to act with an animal. Animals <laughs> always steal the scene, and Stan Stark does, too. Or did. I can't believe you said Stan Stark said Stark. learn your lines, because he never did. <laughs> exactly. No, he never that's did. right. I'm like, <laughs> oh, gosh. That's but he always funny. came out with something. Yeah, well, yeah. Tom, uh, Pat, can you tell me about the photos you have in front of you? They're absolutely stunning. Well, thank you, love. These pictures were taken dur during performance of an Oak Grove play, The Lady's Not for Burning, in 1981. Most of the show was performed in, in the, on the stage, then it began to rain, and the play was finished in the pavilion, where I think it took on truly magical qualities. This one was taken in the pavilion, and this one as, as well. So, these were pictures I, I took for my own for, for, for my own account and had enlarged because I, I, I like them. And now we know this is Pat. This is Pat, yes. And who is this Fred Hayes. Fred Hayes. Fred Hayes. A, a stalwart oh, of the early yes. stage. 